Okay, are we all here? Good evening. I'd like to call this meeting of the Shields Township Board to order. Roll call, please. Are we? Are you guys ready back here, by the way? Everybody good? Okay. Manel, are you good? Yes. I'm alone. Here. Here. January. Here. Brown. Here. Josh Here. Okay, can we all please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. The first item on the agenda is to approve the minutes from our previous meeting of January 22nd. Are there any additions or corrections to the minutes? Okay, then could I have a motion to approve the minutes as presented? I'll make that motion. Second. Okay. Moved and seconded that the minutes be approved. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, thank you. We have approved our minutes. Um, the next item on the agenda, we are focusing on education. And what I'm asking uh, the Township Board to permit me to enter into an agreement with the United Way to provide Success by Six classes in North Chicago. Um, Success by Six is a program for children ages three to five. This program has been offered in Waukegan extensively, and it's only offered in North Chicago about three times a year. So what it is, is uh, they're finding that many children are arriving in the schools not ready to learn. They don't know things like their basic colors, their numbers, they can't identify their name when they see it written. Um, and these are um, counting, sorting, things like that. We've all seen these little books with our kids, right? It hasn't changed that much since we were kids, probably. But the Success by Six program is, it's a one-time thing, but then there's a follow-up. And the parents, it's, it's also training the parents to be their child's first teacher. So the parents are provided with materials and instructions how to present them if they need them and support. And um, they are followed up with by the United Way. The United Way does the follow-up uh, once a month for about a year. And the people who participate in the follow-up get some goodies other than this bag. Every child gets a bag like this. Every family gets a bag full of fun things. And then they get a, a book a month, a new book every month from the program if they uh, allow the data to be collected as far as how the kids are doing um, and to see if the program is effective. So um, we were asked to do it, and I thought it sounded like a good idea. So I'd just like to know what the board thinks and if I can go ahead and and do that. It would be offered at the Chicago, North Chicago Library. Um, and it's, we haven't decided on dates yet, but it would probably start <coughs> in late March or early April. And we would run it for as many times as it was um, attended. If we had good, good response, we'd keep on doing it. Anybody so have any opinions? How exactly would it work though, Cynthia? Would, would members of the board or go to this the library and work with United Way and in, in getting this you could do that if you wanted to but we do have a, a volunteer okay who's in place to run the program at the library ah and we actually have two volunteers we have one from North Chicago and one uh, 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 Kelly Wickett's daughter uh-huh is you mentioned that yeah yeah Logan so, is willing to do so it. this is more of a time S commitment and it's really a time commitment by volunteers right. and uh, for us, it'll be some commitment on my part, but okay. I'm a volunteer too, pretty much. <laughs> so it's it's a volunteer program. Gotcha. Thank Any you. questions? Yes. What cost is going to cost us? Nothing. Nothing is all volunteer. Zero. All volunteer. Yeah. The there, United Way has a grant that pays for all the materials. Is there another township that does the same thing that we do that we're proposing to do? Well, Keegan Township already does it in their library all the time. They run it pretty much 24/7. They do it a lot. Um, and the United Way has been looking for a partner in North Chicago to promote it, and they, um, I actually, it's in my report, my supervisor's report, so I'll try to 
one of the a member of the community in North Chicago came to me and said that they felt it was really important and necessary that we offer this. And so I called the United Way. They came over. They presented the, the program. They showed me the materials. And it looks like it. Um, I was first kind of skeptical because it's only one time. But you can come back if you want. And um, it is prim it's not just for the children. It's for the parents, too, to help them to become their child's mm -hmm. teacher. And there's data from Waukegan as how successful it's been? Yes, there, it shows that there's been about a 50% increase in uh, performance on things like letter recognition, number recognition, knowing shapes and colors. So it is, awesome. it is I think, a, a very effective program. They're still <coughs> gathering data and analyzing it. It's, okay. I think it's only been going for about a year. But um, I think it's a good thing. We can try it. I and mean, it would not have cost the township anything, and it, it would offer the children some uh, enrichment. And we have volunteers to cover the, the work. OK. What do you think? I will uh, support you in that and make the motion that it be approved. Thank you. I mm -hmm. second that. OK. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Thanks. OK, great. Now, our next, uh, let's see, our next agenda item is an update from, uh, we have a special guest in the audience tonight. Dr. William Griffin from CLC, the board of CLC, and he's going to give us a, an update on what's going on at CLC. Good evening, everyone. Hello. Hi. Watch out for that Madam step. Supervisor and trustees, members of the audience. Um, I am William Griffin. I am a resident of Lake Forest, and I've been on the board for 18 years. I served there as an adjunct faculty member as well, and I was uh, acting president on, at CLC for a long time, uh, or for uh, a period of time as well. And uh, now I'm a full-time faculty member at Triton College, which is another community college uh, just south of here in River Grove. I retired from corporate America after 30 years. But I continue to um, share a love of uh, College of Lake County. And I was asked to come, since it's education uh, topic today, to speak a little bit about CLC. So I want to talk a little bit about what's going on at CLC and what we're doing. Community colleges, as you know, are in the news, continue to be in the news. Um, wondering if you knew how many students we might have at CLC. Uh, if you're not uh, familiar with that, we have 15,000 students. Uh, we have 220 acres uh, at Grace Lake Campus. We have a Lakeshore Campus, and we have a uh, township uh, South Lake Campus and Hills. And um, we continue to try to offer quality education at affordable prices for our students throughout Lake County. And let me just give you a few statistics. I'll talk a little bit about what we're doing at CLC. And I also want to talk about and uh, just mention our expansion plans that we have in place at Waukegan uh, campus and also at the main campus in Grace Lake. So we continue to try to keep our taxes low, your taxes low, continuing to cut the uh, uh, bureaucracy at a large institution as ours, where we do have a $100 million budget. But just so that you know, the last 10 years, 8 out of 10 Lake County employees have hired a CLC student. 4 out of 10 Lake County workers have taken a credit course at CLC. Um, our rating, our bond rating at CLC is um, from Moody's, is a triple A. We had 18 uh, 100 graduates in the class of 2014. We received one of the highest grants of any community college in the country a few years ago from the Department of Labor. It was a $19 million grant, one of the largest ever. We also received a $1 million grant, uh, not <coughs> as large, but still significant from the National Science Foundation. We're using those monies to improve our student success through a variety of different programs where we're trying to intervene to help our students succeed and help them graduate. For the average medium value home in Lake County, um, you're paying about $22.50 a month for the College of Lake County's thousands of types of services that we do. We have uh, recently hosted uh, the Lake County Small Business Development Center we also just performed the Workforce Professional Development Institute, and we also hosted a Manufacturing Skills Network. Our student makeup 
just so that you uh, might be interested in that. There's full-time, 28% of that 15,000 plus are full-time students. 72% of them are part-time students. Our makeup of students are white is 48%, black is 8%, Hispanic and Latino make up about 31%, and Asian about 6% of our student body. We um, are about to embark on a major renovation at the Lakeshore campus. It's going to be 50,000 uh, square feet of uh, renovation and expansion. And we are addressing a number of aesthetic and fundamental design challenges there. We're going to expand our space at the Joaquin campus, campus, and we're going to have a one-stop enrollment services program, a life sciences program, library adult education, administration, and child care. And we're going to start that, and it is almost a $48 million project. It will start next month and extend into April 2017. At our main campus, we are expanding and renovating as well. It is about a $25 million project, and the square footage there is about 42,000 of renovation and new space. There, we are expanding to a new three-story facility where we'll expand our engineering and our chemistry programs. We'll do all of this also with an expansion and an upgrade of our sea wing facilities. This building, we're proud to say, will be a LEED Platinum <coughs> building, which is the highest that you can get from the United States Green Building Council. And we'll also have uh, geothermal heating and cooling, rainwater harvesting, LED lighting as well. So we're moving forward at the CLC campus. We'll also have and be hosting a STEM day for girls in the grades 7 through 12, that'll be on February 28th, and hopefully to get more students, particularly girls involved with science, technology, and engineering on that day, and math, that will be Saturday the 28th. So we continue to try to um, offer all kinds of different services, our degree programs, and types of programs, like the STEM program as well, all these services that we're offering uh, at CLC to meet the needs of the Lake County residents. So it is the jewel, I like to call it, of Lake County. If you haven't been out to the towns of Lake County at any of our facilities, Lake Shore, South Lake, or uh, the main campus at Grays Lake, we invite you to come out there and see all of the good things that we are doing uh, to meet the needs of our citizens in Lake County. And our credited courses, I'm still happy to announce that for a credited course, three-hour course, our tuition is $121. It's the best bargain around. We encourage all of our students, our students, to come and get the first two-year degrees, applied science degree, associate's degree, or to come back for further education and re retool their workforce needs. So that's the update from CLC. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. I'll entertain any questions that you might have of me. I just. Um, I have two questions. Um, and thank you for that update. And, um, the 48% of the student body demographics, where is that basically coming from? Is that from Waukegan? And out of the 33, where, where are these kids coming from? Mostly from the western part of um, Lake County. More, more west and south. Yeah, right. one, of the, one, of the reason, one of the reasons we're expanding the Lakeshore campus uh, is we're going to be bringing more programs down there. Okay. And we have, there is a underserved population that we need to be offering more programs down there and hopefully to increase the participation of a lot of the students in that area. So not only are we expanding and renovating, but we're going to be moving some programs down there as well, <coughs> criminal justice, health care programs, and perhaps hospitality as well. And my second question, because of 48 percent, I understand, are white Americans. They're not in Waukegan. Pardon? The, most of them are not in Waukegan, correct? No. Okay, and the 33% of the Hispanic population that, that you've tar that's are going there, are they from Waukegan? Uh, or are they from Round uh, Lake area? West? Mostly the Round Lake area. But you're putting a big renovation in Waukegan to capture some more. Is there any thought process of opening or expanding out where the majority of students are? 
Uh, we're, well, we've got to, some, we're in some discussions about it. Uh, I'd like to do some expansion into the north, sort of the Antioch Lake Villa area, right in that area somewhere. Okay. Um, but these plans have been on the books for some time. Uh, we certainly would like to expand a bit more in that area, let's say between Round Lake area and the Antioch area. Okay. I've got that in, targeted as well. Okay. Thank you. Well, Very interesting. Thank you so much. I have a question. For sure. Okay. Clarification. Uh, you mentioned twenty-two dollars a month. Did Just about to ask that. <laughs> twenty-two dollars. Twenty-two dollars and fifty cents a month for there are um, for the tax bill for a medium per value home of two hundred sixty-seven thousand dollars. Okay. Yeah. Mm. Twenty-two fifty actually a month. Okay. Thank you. Thank, Thank you very, you very much. much. Thank you. Okay, our next agenda item, our next speaker, Tara Thomas, was not able to get here tonight, so we are going to try to reschedule her for a future meeting. Um, our next action item is, um, I need a motion, please, to approve our bills. There they are. Um, the town fund expenses, a motion please to approve the expenses in the amount of $63,337.09. I move we approve the town fund expenses for February in the amount of $63,337.09. And second. Okay, moved and seconded. Beth Gary? <coughs> yes. Maloney? Yes. Her? Aye. January? Aye. Brown? Aye. Okay, then our road and bridge expenses for the month of, well, January and February for the last month in the amount of $23,582.54. Very nice. I move to approve that. Thank you. Second? Second. So? Roll call, please. January? Aye. Brown? Aye. Duskarian? Yes. Maloney? Yes. Perk? Aye. Okay, and then our general expense, uh, general assistance expenses for last month in the amount of $750. <coughs> I move we approve the general assistance expenses in the amount of $750. Thank you. I'll second that. Thank you, Charles. No. Yeah. Well, someone came up to you. Sir? Aye. January? Mm -hmm. Aye. Good Brown? Aye. Gosh, Arian? Yes. Maloney? Aye. Okay. Thank you so much. Um, <coughs> all right. Now, I wanted to talk to the board about this. Um, I got some news yesterday from our attorney. He tells me he is retiring. Richard Cowan, who's been an attorney for, I think, 55 years, and many of those years with Shields Township, um, is actually decided it's time for him to get a life and is, is gonna leave the profession. <laughs> and so we are going to be, <laughs> are gonna be needing a new attorney. And I'm um, asking that the board um, uh, be aware of this and to uh, approve my seeking of qualifications for all of our professional relationships with the township, the attorney, our auditors, accountants, and insurance brokers. Um, we've been calling around at some of the other townships in the area and getting names and um, recommendations. And so I thought a new budget, new year, it's time to look at these things again. So um, I'd like someone to discuss that or approve it or can you just say I'll make the motion say yes <laughs> okay thank you second okay all Can in favor I have a question okay what's the current rate of our current attorney what does he charge us our, our attorney hour? charges us $225 an hour okay um, that is I guess you know that well it's not just about the money we want the best qualified and the most efficient and the m m smartest guy we can find. So, but that, in answer to your question, that, that is what he okay. has been charging us. 
Okay. Someone who also specializes specifically in township right. law. Right, right. Mm -hmm. What? Oh, yes. Um, so can uh, all in favor <coughs> of seeking these uh, qualifications say aye? Aye. 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 Okay. Uh, opposed? Okay, thank you. So we'll, we'll, we'll collect that information and make it available at our next meeting. Um, all right. The next item for action is a decorum rule. That since our last meeting, maybe we should consider this. Um, I c made a co I, I will read this so that everyone will hear it. Given that Shields Township always values civility and does not welcome rude or hostile remarks. Number two, abusive testimony is not allowed at our meetings. Angry tirades make many people uncomfortable and interfere with our ability to correctly understand what is being said. Number three, our meetings are televised. Young people in our community may be watching our meetings. We want to set an example of mutual respect and dignity. So Shields Township hereby sets the following rules for civility and decorum at all town regular and special meetings. Number one, the presiding officer shall conduct meetings in an orderly manner. No person in the audience shall engage in disorderly conduct, including any act that disturbs, disrupts, or otherwise impedes the orderly conduct of any meeting or the presentation of any speaker. During the public comment portion of meetings, all public comments will be limited to approximately three minutes per person. People are directed to be brief and concise in making their remarks. Any paperwork presented to the board shall be given to the clerk for distribution prior to the start of the meeting. The presiding officer, after one warning, may rule that any individual addressing the body to be out of order if that person becomes repetitive, exceeds the time limitation, makes personal attacks against others, makes rude or slanderous remarks, becomes threatening or boisterous, engages in electioneering for a candidate, slate, or cause, or otherwise interferes with the orderly and dignified conduct of the meeting. If the presiding officer rules an individual or group out of order, he, she, or they shall be barred from further remarks at that meeting and will be asked to leave the meeting. Anyone who refuses to leave after being ruled out of order may be fined. This comes from the township statute, a sum of $10 for the use of the township to be recovered in a civil action in the name of the township and circuit court. And then I quote the statute that it's taken from. Um, there were also a few other suggestions that were made by other people. And I would like to point out that these rules apply not just to the audience, but to the board itself, <coughs> to all of us. And we would like to uh, have some discussion now. Any, any thoughts? I move that we approve it. Second. Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded that we approve our decorum rules. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? It's unanimous. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, public comment. Good evening. Dan Rogers, 610 Adelphi Avenue in Nolan. Um, actually, an additional item that I was going to mention. Um, your program that you're talking, Success by Six, you're going to mention or at least uh, let the board know. Uh, my daughter actually is an eighth grade teacher at the um, charter school in North Chicago up at the Navy base. About a third of the kids there are Navy and then it's opened up to North Chicago. Uh, this is her third year there and it's uh, much more than she originally thought because many of the kids that she comes in, the eighth grade kids are reading at a third grade level. So what you're doing, I think, is really cool to try to get people going early and get kids engaged. It's uh, it's probably been the best thing ever. I don't know where she'll end up teaching, but she's gotten uh, a real education on many different levels uh, of, of what's up there. Um, it, it's a neat atmosphere with the kids. They're all in uniforms, and they have some pride in themselves. But some of them are really upset as they get into class, and they can't read. So I think that's really cool that, that there's more stuff going on like that. Good. Um, the second thing is, I just want to bring this to the attention of the board. Um, as you guys may, or I'm sure you know, I'm a lifelong resident of Nolwood. I've lived here my whole life. And, and I, I have uh, you know, strong emotions to the community. 
uh, I was forwarded uh, by a resident, and I think you guys have gotten this too, and the resident actually sent this to me. And I, I'm just troubled because I'm so concerned about this unincorporated area. Uh, the past board did use some funds. They relieved some loans that had been made. And one of the things I'm asking you guys to think of in your next budget, to maybe budget some money to help the road district. The road district will never, in Shields Township, have adequate funds to take care of these roads. The winter is once again raising havoc. Um, my concern, and, and this is very respectfully to, to Scott, very respectfully, um, it, 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 there was a note written back, Scott, that, that the board had uh, made this a part-time position, uh, and the position was specifically made supervisory. W when I ran 15 years ago, the big concern when I ran that I got asked over and over, are you going to have enough time to do this? You're not going to do this full time. And I said, well, the only reason that I can do this is because I live in the community. Um, I think Bill Goodman would as well tell you that it's a much bigger job than what he thought. And this entire community is, is, is just um, so dependent on what the road commissioner does or doesn't do. And it, it's not a supervisory position. It's a lot of work. I mean, I, I put in, my business actually got hurt the, the first four years. Um, my, my business, Rogers Nursery, actually took a hit because I just wasn't able to spend as much time because this was so demanding to do it properly. And the only way to get forward with this road district is to literally sit on your legislator's front doorsteps and beg for money. It, it's a horrible thing. So I, I ask you guys to please be engaged and, and, and help this. It is not a supervisory position. And I'm, and I'm again, um, frustrated in the fact that, that Scott, you, you hire people to drive when that money comes out of the road money and your salary comes out of the town fund. Um, every highway commission in the past has plowed for the township because if you hire somebody extra to plow, you're pulling that money out of the road money. And, and there just isn't enough. Um, another thing I did, and I, I'm trying to stay in my three minutes, I'm hurrying, um, is I, I, did a, I, I put $5,000 a year aside for crack sealing with a company called BAME Sealing. And I had the guy come out and look, and if you drive around Knollwood, you'll see these, these black patches all through Knollwood. Those were done 15 years ago, and they're still holding. So much of the roads have just got crow's feet and they're gone. And, and the, the, this community is really suffering. I, and and I, I urge you, I ask you, I beg of you guys to, to think about alternate funding sources and work as a group to help the highway department find money. Um, we're, we're in a bad way. Come spring, please drive around and, and see what I'm saying. Thank you all for your time. Hopefully I was respectful. Thank you very Thanks, much. Danny. Thank you. Okay, is there any other public comment? All right, uh, township reports. Trustees, <coughs> anyone have a report? Mm -hmm. I do not. Okay, Highway Commissioner? <coughs> yeah, I've got a couple things. One, I do agree with Dan, uh, Mr. Rogers, we have absolutely not enough money to do all the things that need to be done. Um, one thing that has come to my attention over the last month or two is that we have a stoplight at Foster and 43, with, of which there was a contract entered into in 1984 by Shields Township, not the highway department, um, the Lake Bluff Park District, and the Lake Bluff School District. Each of those three, it's a private stoplight, not a state stoplight. Each of those three entities is charged with paying one third of the maintenance cost every year. Somewhere along the line, and I don't know when, uh, that uh, financial responsibility was transferred to the highway department. But the highway department does not have a contract with the state, the township does. So I'd like to, you know, have to. to board pay that bill out of the town fund, it's not significant. They are going to improve the light with LEDs. There's a slight cost there. It's a couple, $3,000 a year expense. And that would help 
So does Lake, finding more money. Lake Bluff, you said Park District? <coughs> and the Lake Bluff School District. And they're, they're one third, one third, one third. Previously contributed? They're still contributed. They still contribute. And they're likely to continue. Right now, there has been a lot of talk about uh, those two other entities withdrawing since the school no longer has a school in this building. Uh, they thought they would get out of it, and the park district thought they'd get out of it, and then I think, I'm pretty sure they're changing their minds now, because I told them, going it alone, you know, we just couldn't possibly afford it. So that would necessitate the removal of the light, for which those three entities would have to pay, which would be a significant cost. Okay. So, I would like to... Uh, I don't know if we can do that tonight. It might be something we, we have can to do with the budget. The budget. Yeah, let's yeah. take it up with the budget and and talk about yeah, it. Yeah, because it's clearly it's. I have the contract here, and the okay. contract is actually expired now. It started in 1984, expired in 2004, but the state just continues these things as long as they continue. <coughs> yeah, I wonder if we could so. renegotiate the contract favorably. Uh, yeah. Probably not. <laughs> Those things sometimes backfire. Okay. No, because it, what it is, it's a statewide contract, or at least a, a IDOT District 1 contract to maintain stoplights. It's mm -hmm. a certain amount per light, depending on how many heads there are and stuff. So it's a bid amount that we just get charged a third of. Okay. All right. Okay. Okay, thank you. Cynthia, just so you might know about the stoplight, there was a, 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 boy, a boy was hit and killed there many, many years ago when the school here was active. Mm -hmm. And that's when they, they put, put the stoplight in, in a foster. And actually was, was first. He lived in the neighborhood and the boy was hit. And that's when they put that that light in. And that's why the three entities at that point all contributed to it because they needed a way to cross there. And, right. and that's and how I, it kind of came to pass. Right. And I do think it's important to keep it because it is a way out for two of the four Knollwood neighborhoods at a protected intersection. Yeah. So I think it, it, it's fairly important to keep it on that busy road. And there's a lot of accidents at McDonald's. There's been some over by Starbucks already. Mm -hmm. You've got to have a couple safe places, I guess. Yes. OK, thank you. Um, assessor, a report? <coughs> yeah. Good evening. So um, the assessor staff we're in a quad year, as you know, and so they've initiated the revaluing of property. Um, they're doing the land values. The lakefront, uh, the county has reevaluated the lakefront values, and those are all being readjusted. <coughs> the um, commercial property land values are getting um, redone, and um, we're going to probably start residential valuing soon. They've been updating all the, the P taxes and the sales throughout the whole township. Thank you. Okay, um, I'm next. So uh, before I say anything else, I just want to say happy birthday to Mrs. Laura Hamill, who turned 93 this month, and Mamie Nixon in North Chicago <coughs> turned 91. So we have two non-engineerians that uh, I'm aware of. I'm sure there are more, but uh, they're both dear, dear people, and uh, we do get to see them from time to time. So I wanted to say happy birthday and congratulations. Uh, one of the key components of my job is that I serve as a liaison between one agency and another and between people in need and agencies that can serve them. Last month, Audrey Clamage, a silver sneakers instructor at Dickinson Hall, called me with an idea to collect gently used shoes to distribute to seniors in Lake County. <coughs> I referred her to Roz Hampton, who works with the seniors in North Chicago. Now drop-off boxes are located at Dickinson Hall, Croya, and the Lake Forest Rec Center. The hope is that no senior will not be working out because of a lack of proper footwear. Thank you, Audrey and Roz, for your desire to help, for your great hearts, and for your initiative in starting something that is new and needed. There are some flyers for the uh, program on the back table if anybody wants to look at that and um, you know, think about contributing. Dickinson Hall is offering a support for caregivers group through a partnership with Faith in Action. It's a wonderful group of volunteers from churches on the North Shore. These volunteers are trained and experienced and very dedicated, and their help is offered free of charge. You can contact Janet Fryer at <coughs> Dickinson Hall for more information or check with Robbie Boudreau at Faith in Action. Her number is 847-721-8414. 
Early this month, we received a visit from Mr. and Mrs. Wood of Lake Forest Place, who are organizing a food drive for our food pantry. We were very happy to meet with them and show them our work and hear their encouraging words of support. They were previously involved with a very large pantry in Springfield before retiring and moving here. And it was great to compare notes. We're looking forward to working with them on their food drive. Meeting with the United Way regarding the Early Learning Club and Success by Six was a great opportunity to see how we can help prepare children aged three to five to succeed in school. Mrs. Betty Harris of North Chicago brought the program to our attention initially and will be involved in administering the program and our very own Logan Wicketts has volunteered to chair the program for Shields Township. Mrs. Sarah Baldwin has been amazing in helping to plan the community garden that we are proposing to install this spring. Her knowledge of gardening is encyclopedic. We've met several times already, most recently with the University of Illinois Extension Master Gardener's Office for advice and support. Thank you so much, Sarah. Mark your calendars for a garden party we're planning for April 26th from 2 to 4 here at the township, uh, weather permitting and all the other details working out. Um, I met with the North Chicago High School National Honor Society uh, sponsor and their members there have produced a commitment to help us work our garden over the summer. So we're going to have kid volunteers from the National Honor Society uh, helping us maintain the garden. And other people, many other people are interested in it, so it's great. Chris awesome. Kennedy of Top Box came up to see us several days this week. On Tuesday, we met with the members of the Minister's Alliance of North Chicago at the Township Office to talk about Top Box and to brainstorm about how to better serve the community. Chris shared stories about growing up as one of 11 children of Robert and Ethel Kennedy and the history behind Top Box. The meeting was facilitated by Alderman Torrance Markham wearing his pastor's hat at that meeting. And we thank him so much and all the pastors and their wives who attended for their time and their effort. Later that evening, Devon Nelson and I taped Dr. Waddell Brooks's cable TV show with Chris Kennedy and Paula Carballido to discuss the program. Thanks to you, Paula, Dr. Brooks, Devon, and Chris for the time and opportunity to get the word out. Top Box has continued to be a wonderful chance for Lake County residents to buy exceptional quality fresh produce and frozen meats at up to 50% off grocery store prices. At our last sale at the North Chicago Library yesterday, we sold out of produce entirely. <laughs> Next month, we'll be sure to bring more. Please tell your friends to take advantage of it. There's no income requirement, and uh, Topbox takes cash, SNAP, link cards, credit cards, and debit cards. Uh, no pre-ordering is necessary. You can just show up and shop, and our next date is Wednesday, March 18th from 4 to 6. Next week on Tuesday is our quarterly get-together with pantry volunteers. I'm making lunch for them, and we are being joined by Jackie Habine from the Northern Illinois Food Bank and her two <coughs> new VISTA volunteers. Um, the formation of the Central Lake Partners Dialerite Service is ongoing. Our second meeting with Fremont and Libertyville Township and the Lake County DOT is coming up this next Monday at 1130. We are striving for borderless, seamless, consistent access to transportation for everybody throughout Lake County, and we're very pleased with the progress we're making toward this end. If anybody's interested in the effort, please call me or email me, and I can forward you meeting minutes and agendas, and your suggestions are always welcome. This month has been crazy for passports, guys. We've had as many as 10 applications in one day. The front desk has been really busy. I guess the word is out that our three passport agents are cute and nice, and that you can get a passport here without an appointment. Also, we want people to know that the passport fee charged at Shields Township goes to support our food pantry. So thank you. We really appreciate your business. Some of you might be wondering where our budget meeting went. It is now scheduled for April 9th at 6.30 here at the township. It will be published in the newspaper. Um, the budgets are posted outside on the bulletin board and are available in our office. Um, we will also be posting the information on the website for your inspection. Thank you so much. Please stay safe, and please, God, let next month be warmer. Amen. I need an, a, a motion, please, to adjourn. I'll Before make that motion. Oh, oh, wait. Go ahead, Charles. You want to say yeah, something? Yeah, I wanted to ask a question to our highway commissioner. Okay. And out of the comments that I've got, from, we heard from public comments, and I know that's his area. I just, do we have a master plan to fix all these roads we can? And is there a set dollar amount? It's really easy to fix. All we need is about another, about $3 million to do this job.
But we get our, our levy this year, I can't remember exactly what it was, two, I'm sorry, we levied more, but we're going to end up getting out of our levy about $270,000 to cover nine miles, nine points. That's what we're going to nine miles over. It's, it's utterly impossible with the money we have to, to do any real maintenance. I do have in the preliminary budget for this year $250,000 to, to uh, repave a couple of very worse roads, but that will be you know, a few percent of them, not, not any significant quantity. Does the township... I just want to ask a question. Does a township like a city get MFT like yeah, motor fuel award? Yeah, about $15,000, I think, That's all. MFT, yeah. Have we made any application for grants? Uh, well, I've had a lot of discussions with, uh, like, uh, Terry Link, the state senator, uh, and I've, I've looked for all kinds of grants. There are none available right now. For we are meeting with, like, county sustainability uh, next Wednesday. Wednesday for lunch. We're going to try and see if they've got any uh, community development block grants or the other grants. They've been cutting back on grants uh, for the last six years. So but whatever they used to be almost <coughs> done is even fewer now. But doesn't the because the county has so many roads, we don't they don't share in our no, no, they don't give us anything. As a matter of fact, they sometimes collect money based <coughs> on the unincorporated roads, but they don't give it to us. I've had with them several times. Yeah, that's uh, my question because I didn't know how many miles. It's nine miles. Nine point. It, it's almost less, ten. We, we actually lost a block of road. Okay. Uh, that's now in Green Oaks. It's the block of Muir west of Waukegan Road. It's now part of Green Oaks. So it's some less than 9.2. Okay. Uh, probably 9.16 or something. And you do have to, from the worstest road to the best road right yeah, now? Yeah, the best road in the, in the township right up until they took it was Muir. <laughs> okay. Now it's in Green Oaks. Okay. Now, it was a paved, you know, two years ago. The only road that's been paved in the last. That's <laughs> just not right. Okay. Thank you. All right. Okay. Uh, okay. okay. We have a motion on the floor to adjourn. I believe. Second. So it's been moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye